Forget its unsuccessful protest against Red Bull. Ferrari only has itself to blame for throwing away what seemed like a certain victory in the Monaco Grand Prix after turning a 1-2 in the early stages into second and fourth place for Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. Leclerc didn't even finish on the podium, having started from pole position and then led the first 17 laps, thanks to two strategic errors by the Ferrari pit wall. As for Sainz, he had to argue against the incorrect strategy the team tried to put him on, something that might have saved Ferrari from itself, but for an inconvenient backmarker getting in the way. Ferrari has a car capable of fighting for the World Championship, but the lack of sharpness meant that in changeable conditions in Monaco, it was outmaneuvered by Red Bull. And it was nothing to do with Perez or Max Verstappen touching the yellow line at the pit exit, which only became an issue post-race because of a careless error by the race director ahead of the weekend. In the chaos of the wet-dry race and the flurry of pit stops, Ferrari was found wanting. And that left Leclerc, in his own words, disappointed and hurt after another bad day on the streets of Monaco. Things started well, with Leclerc leading the early stages of the race in wet conditions, backed up by teammate Carlos Sainz. The key to the race was always going to be the pit stops, not just the timing, but whether you opted for a change to intermediates or if you held out for slicks. Red Bull was the first to move, with Perez, who was at that point just over 8 seconds behind Leclerc but ahead of teammate Max Verstappen, coming in for intermediates at the end of lap 16. This wasn't unduly worrying for Ferrari or Leclerc given their lead, but Ferrari was concerned about Sainz being undercut for second place. Once Perez pitted, they called Sainz in on lap 17, telling him he would switch to intermediates. But Sainz disagreed, believing that it was better to stay out and wait for the chance to switch directly from full wets to slicks. After some consideration, Ferrari ultimately left him out. But that discussion took so long that Ferrari didn't have time to bring in Leclerc on lap 17 instead, something team principal Mattia Bonotto admitted after the race might have been a wise decision. Instead, Leclerc was called into the pits for intermediates next time round, stopping at the end of lap 18. Crucially, Leclerc raised no objections to a switch to intermediates as Sainz did, although he had discussed this possibility earlier, but Ferrari also didn't tell him the plan was to take intermediates. Perez's two-lap undercut had allowed him to eliminate his deficit and turn it into an advantage of more than three seconds over Leclerc. All of this meant Leclerc stopped for intermediates too late to cover Perez's undercut and came into the pits too early to make a well-timed switch to slicks. The blunder bringing Leclerc in for intermediates sent his race into freefall, but Ferrari compounded that problem with a secondary panic. Ferrari's only way to get Leclerc back ahead of Perez and ensure he stayed ahead of Verstappen would be to nail the switch to slick tyres. So it was not a surprise that Ferrari was twitchy when a group of drivers – Daniel Ricciardo, Joe Guan Yu, Alex Albon, Mick Schumacher and Nicholas Latifi – all switched to hards and immediately set the timing screens alight with new fastest sector times. Ferrari reacted to this very quickly, calling in both Sainz and Leclerc in the hope of gaining an advantage over the Red Bull drivers by stopping a lap earlier. But as Sainz was on worn wets, he was rapidly being caught by Leclerc. The gap that was around 7.5 seconds at the start of the lap was only about 3 seconds by the time he entered the pit lane. Sainz's call to pit came while he was still in the middle sector, but Leclerc's instruction came quite late. It's hard to be precise because of the lag over team radio, but it was likely as he approached Raskas, the final corner before the pit lane entry. Then Ferrari suddenly changed its mind, having realised just how quickly Leclerc was catching Sainz. He'd taken just over four seconds out of him on the inlap, meaning he'd find the pit box occupied by his teammates. But when Leclerc was told to stay out, he had already dived into the pit lane. Leclerc's fury was barely contained as he knew instantly the team had made a mistake and had to wait while Sainz's pit stop was finished. The time loss was around three and a half seconds. This blunder from Ferrari cost Leclerc a place to Verstappen, who was around four seconds behind Leclerc when Leclerc made his second pit stop. Had Leclerc waited one lap to pit, he would have stopped on the same lap as Verstappen, who completed a double stack pit stop with Perez also stopping, and therefore rejoined ahead. Instead, Leclerc's delay meant that when Verstappen squirmed his way out of the pit lane a lap later, Leclerc rejoined fractionally behind. 
Verstappen then blocked off an attack up the hill, and with the track dry and everyone on slicks, the writing was on the wall. It confirmed Leclerc's fall from first to fourth, and meant, while he finally finished the Monaco Grand Prix for the first time, he did so off the podium. To make matters worse, although Sainz's strategy could have worked, he got caught behind Nicholas Latifi's Williams on his outlap, having pitted for hards at the end of lap 21. Latifi pulled past Sainz just as he emerged from the pits, and spent around half a lap in front of him before easing off and letting him by entering the tunnel. Perez, who made his final stop for slicks at the end of lap 22, emerged around 1.5 seconds ahead and went on to win the race, chased by Sainz, Verstappen and the unhappy Leclerc. So what was Ferrari's protest all about? Well, after the race had finished, it lodged two separate protests, one against Perez and one against Verstappen. These were both for the same alleged offence of crossing the yellow line at pit exit. The Perez protest was rejected by stewards after Ferrari accepted that Perez did not touch the yellow line. But Ferrari stuck with its Verstappen protest, arguing that he put part of his left front and rear tyres on the left side of the yellow line in breach of the race director's notes. While both Ferrari and Red Bull accepted Verstappen did have part of his left side tyres over the line, the protest was rejected on the basis that for this to be an infringement, the tyre must be entirely over the line. But it was revealed that a mistake in the race director's Monaco Grand Prix event notes contradicted the FIA's International Sporting Code and was at the centre of Ferrari's failed protest. The FIA race director for Monaco was Eduardo Freitas, who was in his second event in the lead role after acting as deputy in other races. He stated in his event notes that, in accordance with Chapter 4, Section 5 of Appendix L to the ISC, drivers must keep to the right of the solid yellow line at the pit exit when leaving the pits, and stay to the right of this line until it finishes after Turn 1. Ferrari's argument was that the instruction to stay to the right, a legacy of a clarification in Turkey in 2020, meant no part of the car could touch the pit exit line. But it turned out that the relevant part of the ISC has been changed for 2022. Instead of specifying that the pit exit line must not be crossed by any part of a car leaving the pits, it now says any tyre of a car exiting the pit lane must not cross the pit exit line. The steward said that based on that new description, a full wheel must be to the left of the pit exit line to cross it. But this was not clear in the event notes because, according to the stewards, Freitas stated that they were a cut and paste from the 2021 version of the event notes and hence had not been changed to reflect the 2022 Appendix L changes. With that contradiction cleared up, Ferrari no longer had a case. But the failed protests were simply a footnote for Ferrari. What really mattered was that under pressure and from a strong position, its strategic errors cost it a victory it can ill afford to lose if it's to end its long world championship drought in 2022.